what's up guys in this video i'll show you how to actually scatter random items using custom scriptable tools that we created in the first part of the tutorial um, basically we'll be using a different static meshes and randomizing it for this purpose i use the dumbbell the duck and then the book and as you can see when i'm clicking each time it's randomly generating a different static meshes not only that will generate a random static mesh but also will create a blueprint instance of it and all of that will be done using scriptable blueprint uh, which we will use inside unreal engine so without further ado let's get started to unreal engine all right as, as you can see in the previous tutorial what we did was when we went to simulate and then clicked on uh, we only generated a book and of course it would simulate the physics and stuff um, but the problem was uh, the when we were to turn off the simulation mode on turn off then it would go away so there was no way to you know keep it sta inst uh, instact intact sorry that's the word i was looking for so basically here we want to randomize so for randomizing what we'll do is duplicate the static meshes so basically go ahead and copy and paste these three static meshes. So I will select the different material, different static mesh that I've collected basically from, I think, Sketchfab. And then we have one, zero, one, and two. So uh, three different items. And basically we need to create some sort of randomizer that will go through these three items when the user clicks through it. So for this purpose, uh, what we can do is we can actually use random integer in range. And one of the idea would be to use a branching scenario, but then it would be, it would get a little complex. So for here, for the min, I would put zero. And then for the max two, so that's zero, one, and two. And uh, for the return value, what I can do is actually uh, switch on in. So we can use the switch on in instead of using the branch scenarios, okay? And what I can do is add pin. So basically, it will allow me to add those 0, 1, and 2. And then I can plug in 0 for that first static mesh, 1 for the second, and then the 2 for the third. Okay. Now, another thing we need to do is actually set them to mobility as well. So right after set mobility, we'll uh, plug it into switch to int and uh, make sure that you're plugging in those each static mesh to the target. Okay, so that way uh, they are plugged into the static mesh component. Okay, and similarly, then f finally you would connect them all to the simulate uh, set simulate physics um, in particular, and that will help us get the physics. Okay, uh, overall this would be the blueprint that we need. So we'll just basically you know compile, save, and go to the window in here. Uh, place on the simulate, click on the drop to, and then of course my dumbbell is too big. And you can see that there's a second dumbbell. We just need to make sure that there's a variation. So when I click on it, again there was a dumbbell. <laughs> but now you can see there's a tiny little book there. Okay, so that means the it is working. Uh, the, there's duck, there's book, there is there are dumbbells. And when I click on it, you can see there's a variation of items. So basically, this will help you set dress your scene, especially for a messy scene that you want to create inside Unreal Engine. Now you can see that, yeah, the whole set is ready. But the thing was, when I turn it off, then it all goes away. And that's what we want to keep it. So we want it to be persistent. And there's a little hack that we'll have to do before that. Let's turn off this debug because it's getting a little annoying to actually see the debugger in there. So let's go ahead and then let's run this again. So I'll click on the simulate and then go to the drop to. And then once I start dropping, uh, you can see there were some scenes, but I think I accidentally grabbed on the floor. So I had to redo this again. Um, so yeah, again, I will do this, making sure this time, maybe hopefully this will go well. And if I were to simulate it, you can run the same experiment that we did earlier okay uh, there are dumbbells there are books so there is a random num random type of items that are populated inside the scene 
but we want this to be persistent so one thing what we can do is we can actually select them all um, in the outliner so we can basically select all of this static mesh and what we'll do is we'll select them all using shift select you know make sure you're still inside the simulate mode okay and what we'll do is go to the actor uh, at the top uh, basically we are going to create a batch actor so we'll go to merge actor and then do a batch once you do that it will not show up and, and the new thing called actor 0 or actor 1 depending on what that will be populated and then next to the actor in a detail there is option call you can basically convert it to a instant blueprint so static mesh instant blueprint basically you can give any name you want so just keep the default and I'll just say maybe a dropped instant instant mesh and that's the idea in essence guys uh, in terms of retaining that uh, a location um, especially because you are running on the physics simulation now you have that uh, blueprint which you can bring in here um, actually you can fine-tune if you want to move items and stuff you know moving the individual transforms and stuff like that uh, very helpful in terms of if you want to you know customize even after you were to use that physics scattering or the custom scattering tool um, I was trying to find the transform I could not but I'm I'm sure that you will find it in here or you could just use this gizmo and move the things around okay and yeah so now if we were to go back and turn off that would go away but we have the inst the instant blueprint so I can compile save and then you know bring into my scene once I bring into my scene, make sure that you uh, set the transform actually uh, to original. And now you have the blueprint of item that we use, uh, we generated by scattering. So basically, this is the idea for this tutorial. Hopefully, in this tutorial, two tutorials, you are able to understand the basic workflow of creating a custom scattering tool. Um, uh, and also understand the workflow of how to create it uh, if you have any questions comments make sure to put them in the chat I'd be happy to answer any questions you have also if you find this tutorial very helpful make sure to subscribe to my channel and also if you would like to help me out then I'll put a link for how to buy me a coffee um, in the link and yeah, keep playing with it. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just put them in the chat and I will try to reply them as soon as I can.